Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today, I just want to give another shout out to Dante for that awesome back wall piece. We just did it in the last episode, but as I was wrapping up the episode, I forgot to give him one last shout out. So I figured I'll do it at the front of this episode. So big thank you, Dante. Thank you again for that. And if you want to know how I got that and want to hear the story behind it, that's in the last episode. Make sure you go check that out. Uh, but today, what we're going to do, we talked about Miles Morales number two in the last episode. Today, we're going to talk about Amazing Spider-Man number 30, which is one of two Spider-Man issues written by uh, Nick Spencer, drawn by Ryan Otley that is going to tie in to this uh, absolute carnage storyline and I, I knew this was coming and someone was telling me there was a new character added into the story and when i saw the preview pages of this book a, a little while ago i saw this new character and i was like who is that so i think it was around the time of um uh the halo con or maybe the weekend after halo con I saw all the Spider-Man books on sale, uh, the Ryan, uh, the Ryan Otley, Nick Spencer stuff. I saw it all on sale digitally, and uh, I think I already owned the first volume, but I didn't own the second, third one, or Hunted. And they were all on sale for like $3.99 each or $2.99. It was like really crazy on Comixology. So I went ahead and bought them, and I did a binge. Uh, each night I read an entire graphic novel. Hunted was the hardest one. I had to split that over two nights because there was like 10 books inside of it. That digital copy is awesome because it comes with all the Spider-Man issues and the point HU tie-in Spider-Man issues uh, in order. So that was really fun to get that full story. So now that I've read all of uh, Nick Spencer's stuff and Ryan Otley's stuff, now I know who this character is. It's a character called Kindred, and they show up. And before we get any further into this, I want to give away the digital code because I forgot to announce that at the beginning of the last episode. So boom, there you go. First person to put that code in gets the code for this book. If you get it, let me know down in the comments below what your review is of this comic. And everyone else, if you've read the comic, continue on. There might be mild spoilers, but for the most part, I'll try to hold back as much as I can because I want you to go check out this book for yourself. Because uh, this was really good. I like Nick Spencer's stuff on Spider-Man. Uh, you know, he kind of lost me a couple years ago when he was like starting to get bigger and he was doing event books and stuff. And I think a lot of po uh, people probably feel that way. Um, but I did like his uh, Superior Foes of Spider-Man book. I thought that was insanely clever and a lot of fun. So uh, I... I think Spider-Man's just his guy, you know? I think some writers, they're just, like, working their way to the character that they always wanted to write. And it's clear that Nick Spencer feels that way about Spider-Man. And he's doing a good job. This Kindred thing, I feel like it's a little drawn out. Uh, but it is, I'm still finding myself interested. Like, in this issue, I hung on to every word Kindred was saying hoping that it would give me some clue as to who they are. It sounds like they knew Norman Osborn and Peter Parker and maybe Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy and Flash Thompson. It sounds like, and Harry Osborn, it sounds like it, they knew Norman from way back when, like all the way in the early days of like the Stan Lee, Steve Ditko stuff. That's what it seems like. Uh, but again, these are just all clues maybe misleading us or leading us right to who Kindred really is. Uh, but either way, I'm, I'm, I found myself hanging on every word of the character. So good job, Nick Spencer, because you, you make me... You're trying to, you're building a good mystery, I guess, because at first I was like, ah, it's kind of, kind of boring, and uh, maybe I'm losing a little interest in it, but then when I pick this up, I'm reading it, and I'm like, what does he say here? What does he say here? So, yeah, clearly it's working. <laughs> it's clearly, it's not boring at all, at least to me. Um, so, and he's got these, like, little two centipedes, like, this is what, kind of what the character looks like, uh, kind of zombie-ish, walks around with a purple cloak, um, and has, like, these two, like, life-sucking centipedes hanging around him almost like maggot in a way from uh from x-men uh but although those were like little mechanical maggots that like you know fed him or something like that this is a little different um so you know we have kindred here coming up to norman osborne in ravencroft and this like starts off just two weeks ago and that's when kindred comes in and apparently kills mysterio so is mysterio dead because i'm behind on dead man logan and i know mysterio was in that book uh, so, uh, so I don't know if Mysterio left that book and came to Ravencroft two weeks ago when this happens, and, but it looks like Mysterio might be dead, uh, but of course it's comics, uh, Mysterio could have made a hologram, whatever it is, uh, you never know, but, uh, Kindred was like, hey, I hired you, you know, you gotta read all the Nick Spencer stuff to kind of understand all that, but he's like, I hired you to do something, and, and you're not really successful at it, so I'm gonna take you down now, and so Kindred apparently kills Mysterio so we'll see so that was a great way to open the issue uh, but then it has him going in uh, Kindred him or her going in and talking to Norman Osborn even though Norman Osborn still thinks they're you know Cletus Cassidy uh, but Norman doesn't say much in this issue he just kind of humbled you know huddled up in the corner just kind of drooling at the mouth uh, so maybe he's on medication or doped up at this point uh, during that storyline so uh, but then you get this great uh, you know retelling of the origin of the black symbiote uh, with Ryan Otley artwork which is fantastic and they don't you know change it that the machine looks very similar to the way the old machine looked it's pretty fun I, so the artwork is really great 
Um, and then you get this one little panel here that I'm just going to show off. And then I'm going to try to hide some of the artwork from here on out. Uh, but this little Venom thing, and it talks about how Venom spawned Carnage. And Carnage has now offsprings of its own in a way, or extensions of himself. And that's where we are now with Absolute Carnage. So it's a great catch-up. And then it, but it also takes place right after Absolute Carnage number three. So this is kind of neat. This is what we've always talked about wanting when some of these tie-in issues come out too late or, you know, when you're supposed to read them in order. This feels like, okay, you can read um, uh, Absolute Carnage three and then read this and then read Absolute Carnage four because this kind of shows a little bit. I mean, like you, you're still wondering how Peter and some of these characters get where they are in this one. Uh, so maybe you'll have to read some of Absolute Carnage four to know that. Uh, but for the most part, you can guess you can take a good guess so uh so yeah so it has spider-man he's trying to protect two characters in particular uh you know as you know hulk has become uh you know venom a venom i guess and then like dark carnage is out there and maybe they're fighting each other we don't know what's happening in the other room uh but so spider-man's trying to protect these two particular characters but you don't really see where anyone else is and then meanwhile he's being chased down by norman osborne slash cletus slash carnage and so there's a big confrontation there and spider-man and him go at it and what i like is as spider-man every time he gets his bell rung he remembers these moments in his life where like this one time where aunt may helped him set up a surprise party uh for harry osborne after he you know got back or got out or something like that because i think he you know went away for a little while and so this is like his return party uh but then it's like uh and maybe it was the time where he went in a an asylum himself or went and sought help I can't remember, but it's like it's around that era, right when Flash Thompson came back from the war. Uh, and so it's kind of a, you know, Flash shows up and there's a little bit of a joint party there and like a little re uh, reunion with Peter and Flash and then Harry and Flash and stuff. And it's like the whole gang is back together and there's really fun stuff. But what I like is this very subtle thing is as Spider-Man is remembering this, he's kind of narrating like, you know, focus, focus, you're getting killed out here while you're thinking of those past memories, trying to remember what you're, what you're fighting for. Uh, you are getting, you're losing, you're like carnage is beating the crap out of you or Norman's beating the crap out of you. So they, they keep cutting back and forth, but the dialogue shifts. So you actually have this uh, dialogue where someone says, remember that last thing you said uh, next, uh, you knew ever, even then you knew. And it says, it's too good to be true. But that's not Peter saying that. You'll notice the the shadow in the background drops to black. So I guess that's Kindred saying that. The the text with red is Spider Man. So it's really subtle, really well done. Black red, black red. Um, I think there was like a Grant Morrison Joker issue where they talked about black and red and insanity and stuff. But I you know I don't know if that's a reference to that or anything. But it's just it's cool because it's clear who's talking, uh, but in a subtle way. So when you start to peel back the layers you find out that maybe Kindred is one of those original group of friends of Peter Parker, someone in that room with them, uh, potentially. You don't know. I, I don't know. You don't know. Maybe you know. I don't know. Uh, but uh, it, either way, it, it built that mystery, and it made me still go, okay, I'm not, I wasn't feeling this character, and I even thought I was getting a little bored with them, but now I find myself just hanging on every panel and frame and dialogue, and so that to me is a, a success as far as I'm concerned, where uh, they brought in this new character, and now I'm hooked. I'm like, I gotta know. Almost to the point where they built it up so much, 30 issues now, that it better be good. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope they don't wait till issue 50 to reveal it. But uh, but either way, it's still, I, um, I found myself hung on. So it was cool. So yeah, there's some great stuff at the end. Uh, there is a, a reveal that, um, you know, that Kindred says to Norman, like, you know, you're not going to be the one to kill Peter Parker or something like that. Like, so maybe hinting at Kindred being from the future even, uh, or knowing at least uh, events in the future. So who knows? Who knows how this is going to go down? Uh, but there, I felt like there was a slight nod to, you know, knowing the future uh, because they say so clearly you're not the one who takes down Peter Parker, uh, but you come close or something like that. And then there's this big reveal at the end uh, that, you know, cuts back to the fight. So it's going from two weeks ago to present. So it, it's kind of neat. So some of the events of this book take place right after Absolute Carnage 3 and, and all the stuff with Kindred takes place two weeks ago. So I guess Kindred is maybe not involved or st uh, took a step back during all this Carnage stuff because I'm sure it's screwing up whatever their plans are for Peter Parker. Um, so maybe Kindred will come in and try to save Peter in the next issue because it's like, I don't, I can't have you die because, you know, who knows, maybe like I said, Kindred's from the future or Kindred has something else planned for Sp Spider-Man Peter Parker. So I don't know, we'll see. But uh, let me know what you think. If you read this book, I actually dug it. I've been digging this run now that I've binged it all. I'm hooked on. I still got to read issues um, 26 through 29. I haven't read those. I only read up to 25. Uh, I bought 24 and 25 digitally. I think they were like 99 cents each or something. So I threw those 
those on just so I could have the first 25 issues of the run. And uh, it was fun to read it. And it's it's a really good book. So I think uh, moving forward, I might, if I can afford it after Absolute Carnage, as long as there's not a ton of other spinoffs coming out of this series, I might go to monthly subscribing to Amazing Spider-Man because that's how much fun I had. Uh, it was really good. So, uh, and Ryan Otley, I love his stuff from Invincible. It's so great to see him on Spider-Man and he's killing it. I can't wait to see what other characters Nick Spencer has in store for him to draw uh, because it's kind of reminds me of like when Jim Lee jumped on Batman. It was like, oh, who's who's going to draw? And that's how I feel with Ryan Otley. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what characters he's going to draw. And luckily it looks like he's just going to draw all of them, which is fantastic. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Have you read this issue? Please let me know down below. And if you got the digital code, let me know what your review is down below as well. And uh, thank you guys for supporting the show as always. Like I said, I'm getting a little sick. So this may be all I record today. Maybe I'll try to record one or two other things that are not Venom related. Um, but if I do get a little sick tomorrow and my, I can't control my voice or it's it's down or whatever, uh, or I look like crap because uh, I've been having this headache, you know, too. So if, if anything happens, uh, basically what I'll do is uh, there is a new producer that got added on to the Venom movie. And I, I, I saw the announcement when it happened, but I didn't cover it yet. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do one of my videos where you just see the uh, article and you just hear me talking over it. Uh, maybe I'll do one of those next so I can catch you guys up on what new, you know, crew members are coming on to the Venom movie. So that's probably what we'll talk about in the next episode and then i'll probably take a couple days off uh because wednesday i'm off and new comics come out wednesday and we'll have more absolute carnage then so uh thank you very much for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you all in the future peace